This is the sprawling city of Los Angeles, population about three million and still growing, famed for movies and drive-ins, for sun and for smog. Over Los Angeles tower these Hollywood Hills, forming a basin to hold this city and its most famous section, Hollywood. In the distance, 50 miles from this spot, are the snow-covered San Gabriel Mountains, a favorite place for skiers who like to be able to spend the morning on the mountain and come back the same afternoon for a swim in their pools. Los Angeles has been described as a lot of suburbs in search of a city. This is one of its suburbs. A few years ago, this hill was as bare as the ones we've just seen, but population here is the fastest growing in the nation, and this hill, like so many others, has fallen victim to housing needs. One of the first to come up here to live was comedian Mort Saul. He lives alone in this Japanese-style house near the top of the hill. Saul says he came up here seeking privacy, and he had it, but briefly. Now his home is surrounded by those of his new neighbors. We'll be going inside in a moment as this Sunday, News and Comment presents a conversation with Mort Saul. Nationwide Insurance, the company that created Family Secure and Service, presents Howard K. Smith with news and comment. March 24, 1963. This Sunday, a conversation with Mort Saul. But first, a message from Nationwide Insurance. In traffic like this, you need good brakes, good tires, and good auto insurance. This is Ted Bond speaking for Nationwide Auto Insurance. For three good reasons, fast claim service, liberal coverage, low cost, you can't buy better protection. Here are a few examples of what we mean. Take claim service. When trouble comes, you can depend on Nationwide. You get round-the-clock service. And half of all nationwide auto claims are paid within 24 hours after proof of loss. How about coverage? Well, nationwide offers over 20 liberalized features. Here's just one example. If your car is insured with nationwide and someone steals it, we pay you up to $10 a day for loss of use of your car and up to $200 for stolen clothing and luggage. It's the most liberal protection of its kind anywhere and that's true of all nationwide coverage. And finally, our rates are low. If you own a compact car, we give you a discount on liability insurance. And if you own two cars, you get still another nationwide discount. Yes, when it comes to cost, coverage, and claim service, you can't buy better car insurance. How about nationwide for your car? Nationwide, originator of Securance. All your protection through one man, one plan, with one check. Securance. Exclusive with Nationwide. This is the first of four different levels in Mort Saul's house. He bought the place a year and a half ago because, he said, it was perfect for his high-fidelity system. Saul has been described as a leading iconoclast, and Time magazine wrote that he is the first notable political satirist in the United States since Will Rogers. With even-handed enmity, he deals with Republicans and Democrats as targets. Mort, in the year 1960, you made the statement that it was your considered opinion about the Kennedy-Nixon contest that neither could win. <laughs> Do you feel that the last two years have justified and confirmed your opinion? Oh, yes. I think that uh, I find even with audiences now, when I talk about uh, the president, that they don't take umbrage because they have no passion. Even the Democrats, who are, seem to be captives of the Kennedys, there may be a correlation between Kennedys and Democrats, I don't know yet. I don't have time for a study, but I may endow a foundation if I get lucky, if the foundation gets lucky. But uh, I have a philosophy, but that's no, uh, that doesn't mean that necessarily the uh, Democrats have. I, uh, I feel that uh, there's some people who feel that uh, Vice President Nixon lost the debates, but I don't think Kennedy won them in any event. Yes, I, uh, I really think that's true. I think it's a default situation. 
Now, some people have said that the present administration is the third Eisenhower administration. Do you think that's too much? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that uh, the charge that was managed news, uh, unquote, and there are no shots allowed of the uh, photographs of the president uh, playing golf, but uh, I haven't found it overly energetic. We do give an E for effort in this country. I hear the, the uh, liberals saying, uh, well, he tried. I, uh, I never got any points for trying myself, but I thought that managing Congress was a part of a president's job, but then I grew up under Roosevelt. <laughs> Now, now, your prediction that neither Kennedy nor Nixon could win turns out to have been more accurate than the Gallup poll because Kennedy won by one-tenth of one percent, not enough voters to fill a stadium, a football stadium. Now, suppose the one-tenth of one percent had gone the other way and Mr. Nixon had been elected. Do you think the situation would be different? Uh, well, I think it would be more violent. I think the president has, uh, weighs things a little more. I'm sure that we would... Uh, We'd have Marines in Cuba now. Well, we do at Guantanamo, but uh, let's say that they'd be uh, hyperthyroid if they were on the beach. They'd probably find Senator Claire Engel waiting for them, a Democrat, ironically enough. But um, uh, yes, uh, I, would, I just think that I think that both of them defer to uh, what they think is public opinion, which isn't. The most vocal is not necessarily the majority. If some uh, a redneck in the South says, uh, why wait for the law, let's lynch him. I don't think it should be answered or framed on the back of a magazine as the great ideas of Western man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, that's the way uh, it comes out. I think Vice President Nixon will be uh, heard from in, the, uh, in one form or another, even if he does not run. I think well, he will be heard from. I met him recently, by the way. So... Uh, and how was the meeting? Uh, most cordial. Neither one of us were running. So it was cordial. <laughs> Let me ask you something about yourself. Now, you, uh, on occasion, have, uh, have distanced yourself from the sick and the beat comedian, saying that you want to get involved and stay involved with life. Now, if that is so, why do you live on mountaintop suburbia and here on the <laughs> west coast when all the news is made and the decisions are made on the east coast where all the other commentators are? Well, I think this uh, population mass, Howard, in the east is because people that were not aware in the, in the early days of the United States that there was room beyond the mountains. They just were not informed. But uh, we are informed with television now. Everybody's informed immediately. In fact, everybody's terribly aware, but nobody knows anything. That's kind of distressing. But uh, I don't know where else to go, to tell you the truth. I'd be happy to leave. I'm not exactly an advocate here of Los Angeles, but I am in show business. I'm not in politics, although I can't convince people or to focus here. I can't convince people I'm a performer. That's my own fault, I guess. But uh, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm just inactive enough to convince them I am in po political life, but uh, <laughs> indecisive enough. But I, um, California's a little easier for anonymity, mm -hmm. I find. The East is a little more pressured. Washington, I think, is terribly dull. I don't think Washington looks like an American capital. I'll venture that opinion mm -hmm. tonight. I think that uh, the capital should be in something like Denver. I think President Eisenhower concurred <laughs> for a bit. Now, in, in comedy, as in many other realms of life, there's an establishment. Just mm -hmm. think of Bob Hope and Jack Benny. Now, most of the established comedians are jolly and, uh, and funny and cautious. Now, yes. you tend to be trenchant very often. Do you, think you, <laughs> do you think you make the establishment? Gee, I don't know. Uh, they're very, uh, uh, the ones you mentioned, uh, those in the establishment, are very charitable. I think it's a characteristic of the heavyweights, people who are really established, that, uh, that they are charitable toward others. They will accept anyone who, uh, th in their judgment, is talented. I'm flattered by that, and they've been very generous to me. But um, a man has to go his own way. That's the only thing you can find is who you are and uh, be true to it. I'm in the process of finding out. I would say that's the 
only dynamic dimension to uh, my existence. Now you have been remarkably successful for uh, quite a time now, but the New Yorker magazine said some time ago, one thing you can say for sure is, Mort Saul is not becoming mellow. Do you think, <laughs> is it not true that uh, success has in some way begun can you tell me whether in your heart of hearts you can say it has not in any way spoiled Mort Saul? Gosh, I hope not. Uh, I certainly hope not. I've, uh, I've read a lot of things about myself. Uh, the only indication of success has been the attacks in several magazines, not including The New Yorker. But uh, they don't tend to discover me so much as discover me and attack me. I mean, discover my presence and attack me to discover uh, any uh, ability, question mark, is something else again. I'm not mellow, I'm not happy with the way things are. And uh, in that sense, I'm not mellow. Can you tell me something about the times you live in? You have had some pungent comments on that. Now, uh, you had most of your success in the 1950s. Yes. A famous television producer called them the Fabulous Fifties. Yes. Uh, a famous uh, Princeton professor, Eric Goldman, called them the Flabby Fifties. Which side are you on? Boy, well, uh, they weren't flabby. I mean, they, were, they, had, uh, they moved pretty good, but I think we, um, we inherited that. I don't know if that was by our own uh, our own drive. All we did was react, is what I mean, in the United States. I don't think that the, um, I think the people learned to settle for less in the 50s. And I'm not, uh, I'm a product of the 50s. I mean, I uh, first came to light professionally under uh, President Eisenhower. I don't think it's key to that. But I built whatever reputation I am fortunate enough to have with the public during the Eisenhower years. And uh, my presence is very illogical. As uh, Bob Rice said in the New Yorker, uh, I understand your role, but not your position. <laughs> <laughs> it's a semantical barrier. I don't understand my position either. <laughs> well, let me try and plumb it. Uh, that same New Yorker article said that you were a nihilist Mm. who could see nothing good in the present except perhaps the development of the FM automobile radio. Can't you find something in, in life today a little more hopeful than that? Oh, sure. Uh, there's a lot of good things going on. There's uh, you know, freedom riding, people caring about things like that. But I, uh, I'll admit that society is a little overly technological, but there's a, a terrible overriding conformity, and there isn't much encouragement even if you do take a chance. In fact, uh, you can almost tell the verification of your ideals by the very people who try to stomp on you when you uh, even uh, flirt with them. Hmm. Well, now, your stated ambition on many occasions has been to overthrow the government. In, <laughs> in moments yes. of quiet despair in Washington, I share that ambition. But after that, after the fun part is yes. over, what do you replace it with? What do you replace it with? Well, uh, part of every rebellion, I think, are the uses of the past. I think you should use part of the past, and you should build on it. You shouldn't discard it merely because it is the past. The past is uh, a lot of things I don't like, but it is also Thomas Jefferson which I uh, do like. But I think, uh, I don't think you take a capitalism that died before you were born and try to implement it militarily. I don't think you go into a military race. Because the area that I remember in the United States as I was growing up, that no one could compete with outside this country were the ideals of the United States. Nobody could beat us in that race. We were first, and nobody showed or placed. Ideals. If we don't believe in the country, who will? Believe a country is as good as the people. And you have to believe in the people. They're not merely to be manipulated. And uh, uh, I, be I believe in them I, uh, very much so, provided they're given the information. Now, somebody once said to Senator Richards out here in California, State Senator Richards, human nature will never change. As usual, it was a cynical liberal, as predicted. And uh, 
He said, perhaps not, but uh, human nature, do, uh, human information will. And uh, I uh, uh, pin all my hopes on that. Now, about information, <clears throat> do yes. you have any ambitions or desires to go into my field, news commentary? Yes, very much so. I'd like to uh, report on the news. I tried to do it on The Tonight Show last year. When I did that last June, I tried to make a, a pilot film within The Tonight Show, report on the news, and show that it could be done. And uh, I think maybe uh, across the board, that is uh, five nights a week, do the news. I think... Uh, some humor is needed in the news. Well, no, no humor is needed, <laughs> but I think to underscore the humor in the news is essential. And that doesn't have to be political, by the way, the, necessarily. Uh, yeah. Tell me, 1962 will go down in history as the year comedy discovered the Kennedy family in yes. comic books and painting books and albums and so on. Do you think that that is a durable subject? No. Uh, I don't even think it's negotiable. When I first, uh, when President Eisenhower uh, no longer ran, when uh, the, the Vice President, uh, Mr. Nixon, ran against Mr. Kennedy, people said to me, you will have nothing uh, to talk about because President Eisenhower had definite characteristics and these two people are unknowns. Now we find that these people do have characteristics. The President Kennedy uh, is uh, that people uh, parody him. Well, I don't parody him. In other words, I think they're criticizing him for all the wrong reasons. The way he talks is not what's wrong. I don't object to his private life. I might object to his public life. And that's all he's responsible to me for. I've met him personally, and I liked him personally when he was a senator. But that has nothing to do with being president. There are a lot of people I like who are not president. And uh, I didn't think that was one of the qualifications for office, by the way, that I like him. But... Uh, I don't think that's a, uh, a matter of fact, I think that's doffing your cap. I think that's the easy way out for a performer, uh, to mimic someone, uh, to look as much as you can. When we mimic a movie star, we're not necessarily degrading them. I will now give you my impression of the great Clark Gable. That's what performers used to say. So now the center of public relations has become Washington, not Hollywood. Uh, that worries me a little bit. I think that... Uh, the president, per se, is not the issue. The issue is the issue from issue to issue, whether it is the domestic economy. In other words, uh, in fact, I don't think we're often told of the issues. While everyone is worrying about Fidel Castro, uh, we're not told that France has practically declared war on England <laughs> with arms <laughs> supplied by Germany. <laughs> so. Uh, that worries me a little bit, and I do, do not think that is durable. I don't think the administration will object because it will keep a public relations program going for them. But they will be the first ones to object, I predict, when other people employ that public relations program, should they run against that administration. Hmm. Now, you said you admired the president. You knew him when he was senator. A recent magazine article, a celebrated magazine article, has predicted that his brother, Robert Kennedy, the attorney general, will be the next president. Yes. Uh, have you met Robert Kennedy? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I uh, know the author of that article, uh, who now lives in Italy. I hope there's no correlation between that. We won't know until <laughs> he tries to return to the United States, <laughs> should he be that uh, non-cautious. But... Um, uh, no, I don't, uh, I don't know if that's the truth. I think that uh, if we go by the Gallup polls, he may run for vice president in 1964. But uh, I, don't, um, I don't think that the... Uh, I feel that the president uh, has been running ever since he got in. The job is running the government. The job is not... Or it's, he's not running a popularity contest. He is the president. Uh, as Edward P. Morgan said on your very own network, he pointed out that once uh, on the radio that uh, he was elected to rule, not to be loved. I don't think you can be loved at all times. I don't remember that President Roosevelt was overly loved, and he's a memorable ruler, mm -hmm. very influential. Some a critic of the president's has said his aim is obviously to become a beloved ex-president. Do you think that's fair? We're, uh, as well as a beloved president, 
Well, I wish he'd be the president and stop being such a memorable president sometimes. I have that. Ambition. Well, excuse me. Let's break just for a moment while we have a message from our sponsor, Nationwide Insurance. A lonely experience going to the hospital. Flowers help. Get well cards, too. But it's especially comforting to know that there will be money on hand to help pay the bills. With nationwide family hospitalization, that's one worry you won't have. If someone in your family goes to a hospital, Nationwide provides up-to-date benefits, cash benefits direct to you. Room and board, x-rays, ambulance, drugs, anesthesia, surgery, medical expenses. Nationwide can help pay most of these costs. You concentrate on getting well. We concentrate on getting the bills paid. And how about a cash income for normal living expenses if the head of your family is disabled? Income plans by Nationwide provide monthly checks if you're disabled by a sickness or accident. These dollars help pay for the essentials of daily living that go on all the time. You select a realistic monthly amount. There are no costly extras. You pay for what you need. Check your present health insurance. Be sure it covers hospital expenses and a replacement income. Right now, when your health is fine, look into a hospitalization and income protection plan by Nationwide. Nationwide, originator of Securance. All your protection through one man, one plan, with one check. Securance, exclusive with Nationwide. Corner. I think one paints oneself in a corner. Mort, you have expressed an ambition to be a news commentator. Let me enlist your services as a news commentator now. Far the most emotional foreign issue in Washington today is Cuba. What to do about Cuba? Have you got any thoughts you could help us with? I was hoping that the uh, president might talk to the uh, uh, prime minister down there. Just talk to him maybe have the Secretary of State talk to him. But it is disconcerting to pick up a book by, as I did the other day, by Che Guevara, who is the, uh, uh, the head of the National Bank in Cuba. Che's National Bank, as someone paid, pointed out. <laughs> Certainly not Nelson Rockefeller, Governor Rockefeller. And uh, have him say uh, that the United States would use economic blockade, would try to starve them out, would use the OAS, would bribe other countries and so forth. And to find that the book was written in 1959, I find on the fly, it's very disconcerting. I, uh, I find myself a conscientious objector in peacetime, if this is peacetime. The, uh, I think it would, uh, I don't think any pr problem is insurmountable, to quote uh, Krishna Menon. <laughs> the famous tea drinker, although it didn't make him calm, did it? <clears throat> well, the biggest domestic issue bothering Washington is how to get the economy moving, and the president's got a tax bill to do something about it. Have you got any uh, any thoughts on that? Well, uh, there's a grandstand play that goes on in Washington, in my opinion, that has to do uh, with... Uh, Continual uh, talking, uh, well, first of all, it has to do with defense contracts. This is a wartime economy in peacetime. Our, uh, we seem to substantiate the charges of our worst enemies, uh, our defined enemies, such as uh, Premier Khrushchev, of a, a wartime economy, not a bountiful, productive economy. Uh, and we, uh, uh, there's continually they talk about no deductions, Mortimer Kaplan, who I believe was in the University of Virginia, which graduated Ted K Senator Ted Kennedy and Attorney General Robert Kennedy, by coincidence, uh, who continually grandstands and says, why should these people have uh, 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 ships, uh, you know, yachts, uh, when the average man doesn't have them? The average man says, here, here, and so forth. Uh, it seems to me to be a, uh, a grandstand play. Uh, there's nothing wonderful about being able to deduct business dinners except that a person with more money than the average person circulates his money. He doesn't hang on to it. There's not a real depression. There's a recession. People have money, 
but they don't spend it. They are fearful. For the president to say there is a crisis and then to go off the air and leave us hiding under the bed, I would say is no more than a red alert. That seems to be, that's this administration to me. Uh, in mathematics, they used to say in, in school, uh, the, first, uh, the first part of the um, uh, solution of a problem is to state it correctly in mathematics. Well, he states the problem, but he does not go on to solve it and, uh, or even to lead people in solving it or to enlist the aid of those who can solve it. I believe, uh, now not to digress, Howard, but to, uh, to get back to the tax problem, the economic problem, uh, I believe the economy sh should circulate. But, uh, for instance, uh, an amusing thing came up the other night. You have to list uh, what you talked about in this industry, for instance, that's a pompous term, the entertainment business. If you talk to someone, it can't be goodwill. If you have a business dinner, you must talk to a producer about a movie. You can't just go to dinner with him because he's a producer and you're a performer. So I suggested to one producer at Universal Pictures that to he, uh, this is a definite producer I have in mind, that's why I mentioned the company, to, um, uh, uh, to state that he had had dinner with Mort Saul and uh, when they say, what did you discuss, to put down that he discussed overthrowing the government and see if it was deductible, <laughs> you do spend the money. I think it's a grandstand play. In other words, again, it's E for effort. The president tried. It's like trying to name a Negro Secretary of Urban Affairs, and then all the liberals say, well, he tried. I wonder if that's enough. Is it enough to satisfy the liberals, even if he did try? I didn't, I didn't think the Democratic Party was made to satisfy the liberals. The Democratic Party was not made to satisfy the country. This country has a, a role to play, and the president has a role to play, and it is not to land on his feet. It is to lead that party and to lead the country, by the way, and not as a byproduct. Even if, you know, they say we must fight communism. That is the defined enemy. Well, I'm looking for someone to lead me and to show me how. No one tells me. Tell me, you are sometimes mentioned in the same breath with Will Rogers, <laughs> and it's been said that this irritates you because you feel that you would like to decide whom you want to be mentioned in the same breath with. <laughs> can, can you tell me whom you would like to be mentioned in the same breath with? Well, um, I hmm. once read in Freud's diaries <laughs> <laughs> that when the Vienna Medical Society ostracized him, the Benet Brith gave him a forum without agreeing with everything he had to say. They said he needed a place to speak. So he wrote in his diaries that the role of the Jewish people is that of the opposition. And I sometimes have a nightmare of a football player with the letter O on his chest. That's the only number he has, zero. <laughs> I wonder if that sums up the problem. I think that uh, Will Rogers was in collusion with the people he theoretically was a critic of. If I can end a sentence with a proposition. <laughs> I did in the question. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, do you find that there are any subjects that it, you can't be humorous about? For example, I found I find it hard to think humorously about Adolf Hitler. Are there things alive today that it's impossible to be funny about? Well, it's at the discretion of the performer. The uh, the depth of the audience taste seems to be boundless. <laughs> they will stand for anything. I'm sorry to report. So you have to censor yourself. Uh, hopefully we can censor ourselves. That's the wonderful thing about this country, that we can censor ourselves and no one will do it for us, hopefully. Uh, but um, for instance, I do not, uh, I don't joke about uh, death and uh, I don't joke uh, about uh, Marilyn Monroe, and I don't joke about uh, Princess Grace and her recent program, Her Night at the Palace. <laughs> Princess Grace plays the palace. I don't joke about those things. But uh, in other words, uh, that's my uh, that's my uh, you know wedding present to her, her privacy. I don't joke about Elizabeth Taylor, mostly because not because I'm a, a hero or there's anything noble about me, but those areas really don't interest me. I think that's the basis of that. Um, on the other hand, I don't think anything is sacred. I think that you can take these things on, but they have to, they have, they have to be dealt with. The discretion has to do with importance. There's a proportion of importance, and there are things that have to be gone after.
for instance, the comedians you mentioned earlier who, who mimic the president, I think that's against the law. And if I recall when I was a child, on the radio, uh, you were not supposed to imitate FDR. That was not considered acceptable. I think that's disgraceful. But they seem to object to his private life, not his public life. That I can't understand. Tell me, do you have any other or ulterior purpose in your work than making a living by making people laugh? Uh, the audience seems to have defined that, Howard, as, as my uh, responsibility. I must be amusing, but I can take anybody on and I can be as impertinent as I want to. At a recent Democratic function for the, the Lieutenant Governor of California, I filled in for Adlai Stevenson, and I opened by saying to the audience, 1,000 assembled Democrats, professional Democrats at $100 a plate, I said, I fill in for Adlai Stevenson with modesty, but comforted by the thought that you have a history of settling for a good deal less than Adlai Stevenson. I didn't get the laugh. <laughs> well, Mart, I hope you continue to take on many people and continue to be successful at it. Thank you very much for letting us come here. Good night. Nationwide Insurance, the company that created Family Securance Service, has brought you Howard K. Smith with news and comment. Next week on News and Comment, the first of a two-part series on what's wrong with Hollywood. Mr. Smith will talk with leading film personalities about the star system, what's happening to the American picture industry, how Hollywood is changing, what is Hollywood's future. Among the guests will be Jack Lemmon, Joe Mankiewicz, Lee Remick, Gloria Swanson, Stanley Kramer, Sheila Graham. Next Sunday on News and Comment, the first of two programs on what's wrong with Hollywood. Get your news straight from the men who cover the stories. ABC correspondents around the world report the latest headlines on Murphy Martin with the news every weekday evening at 11, 10 o'clock Central Time on ABC. And how about a cash income for normal living expenses if the head of your family is disabled? Income plans by Nationwide provide monthly checks if you're disabled by a sickness or accident. These dollars help pay for the essentials of daily living that go on all the time. You select a realistic monthly amount. There are no costly extras. You pay for what you need. Check your present health insurance. Be sure it covers hospital expenses and a replacement income. Right now, when your health is fine, look into a hospitalization and income protection plan by Nationwide. Nationwide. Originator of Securance. All your protection through one man, one plan, with one check. Securance. Exclusive with Nationwide. To a corner. I think one paints oneself in a corner. Bart, you have expressed an ambition to be a news commentator. Let me enlist your services as a news commentator now. Far the most emotional foreign issue in Washington today is Cuba. What to do about Cuba? Have you got any thoughts you could help us with? I was hoping that the uh, president might talk to the uh, uh, prime minister down there, just talk to him, maybe have the secretary of state talk to him. But it is disconcerting to pick up a book by, as I did the other day, by Che Guevara, who is the, uh, uh, the head of the National Bank in Cuba. Che's National Bank, as someone paid, pointed out. <laughs> Certainly not Nelson Rockefeller, Governor Rockefeller. And uh, have him say uh, that the United States would use economic blockade, would try to starve them out, would use the OAS would bribe other countries and so forth. And to find that the book was written in 1959, I find on the fly, it's very disconcerting. I, uh, I find myself a conscientious objector in peacetime, if this is peacetime. The, uh, I think it would, uh, I don't think any pr problem is insurmountable, to quote uh, Krishna Menon, <laughs> the famous tea drinker, although it didn't make him calm, did it? <clears throat> well, the biggest domestic issue bothering Washington is how to get the economy moving, and the president's got a tax bill to do something about it. Have you got any, uh, any thoughts on that? Well, uh, there's a grandstand play that goes on in Washington, in my opinion, that has to do uh, 
with uh, continual uh, talking. Uh, well, first of all, it has to do with defense contracts. This is a wartime economy in peacetime. Our, uh, we seem to substantiate the charges of our worst enemies, uh, our defined enemies, such as uh, Premier Khrushchev, of a, a wartime economy, not a bountiful, productive economy. Uh, and we, uh, uh, there's continually they talk about no deductions. Mortimer Kaplan, who I believe was from the University of Virginia, which graduated Ted, Senator Ted Kennedy and Attorney General Robert Kennedy, by coincidence, uh, who continually grandstands and says, why should these people have uh, uh, ships, uh, you know, yachts, uh, when the average man doesn't have them? The average man says, here, here, and so forth. Uh, it seems to me to be a, uh, a grandstand play. Uh, there's nothing wonderful about being able to deduct business dinners except that a person with more money than the average person circulates his money. He doesn't hang on to it. There's not a real depression. There's a recession. People have money, but they don't spend it. They are fearful. For the president to say there is a crisis and then to go off the air and leave us hiding under the bed, I would say is no more than a red alert. That seems to be, that's this administration to me. Uh, in mathematics, they used to say in, in school, uh, the, first, uh, the first part of the um, uh, solution of a problem is to state it correctly in mathematics. Well, he states the problem, but he does not go on to solve it and uh, or even to lead people in solving it or to enlist the aid of those who can solve it. I believe, uh, now not to digress, Howard, but to, uh, to get back to the tax problem, the economic problem, uh, I believe the economy sh should circulate. But, uh, for instance, uh, an amusing thing came up the other night. You have to list uh, what you talked about in this industry, for instance. That's a pompous term, the entertainment business. If you talk to someone, it can't be goodwill. If you have a business dinner, you must talk to a producer about a movie. You can't just go to dinner with him because he's a producer and you're a performer. So I suggested to one producer at Universal Pictures that to he, uh, this is a definite producer I have in mind, that's why I mentioned the company, to. Um, uh, to state that he had had dinner with Mort Saul and uh, when he said, what did you discuss, to put down that he discussed overthrowing the government and see if it was deductible. <laughs> you do spend the money. I think it's a grandstand play. In other words, again, it's E for effort. The president tried. It's like trying to name a Negro Secretary of Urban Affairs and then all the liberals say, well, he tried. I wonder if that's enough. Is it enough to satisfy the liberals? even if he did try. I, did, I didn't think the Democratic Party was made to satisfy the liberals. The Democratic Party was not made to satisfy the country. This country has a, a role to play, and the president has a role to play, and it is not to land on his feet. It is to lead that party and to lead the country, by the way, and not as a byproduct. Even if, you know, they say we must fight communism. That is the defined enemy. Well, I'm looking for someone to lead me and to show me how. No one tells me. Tell me, you are sometimes mentioned in the same breath with Will Rogers, <laughs> and it's been said that this irritates you because you feel that you would like to decide whom you want to be mentioned in the same breath with. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you tell me whom you would like to be mentioned in the same breath with? Well, uh, I hmm. once read in Freud's diaries <laughs> 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 that when the Vienna Medical Society ostracized him, that the Benet Brith gave him a forum without agreeing with everything he had to say. They said he needed a place to speak. So he wrote in his diaries that the role of the Jewish people is that of the opposition. And I sometimes have a nightmare of a football player with the letter O on his chest. That's the only number he has, zero. <laughs> I wonder if that sums up the problem. I think that uh, Will Rogers was in collusion with the people he theoretically was a critic of. If I can end a sentence with a proposition. <laughs> I did in the question. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, do you find that there are any subjects that it, you can't be humorous about? For example, I, found, I find it hard to think humorously about Adolf Hitler. Are there things alive today that it's impossible to be funny about? Well, it's at the discretion of the performer. The, uh, 
the depth of the audience taste seems to be boundless. <laughs> they will stand for anything. I'm sorry to report. So you have to censor yourself. Uh, hopefully we can censor ourselves. That's the wonderful thing about this country, that we can censor ourselves and no one will do it for us, hopefully. Uh, but um, for instance, I do not, uh, I don't joke about uh, death and uh, I don't joke uh, about uh, Marilyn Monroe, and I don't joke about uh, Princess Grace and her recent program, Her Night at the Palace. <laughs> Princess Grace plays the palace. I don't joke about those things. But uh, in other words, uh, that's my uh, that's my uh, you know wedding present to her, her privacy. I don't joke about Elizabeth Taylor, mostly because not because I'm a, a hero or there's anything noble about me, but those areas really don't interest me. I think that's the basis of that. Um, on the other hand, I don't think anything is sacred. I think that you can take these things on, but they have to, they have, they have to be dealt with. The discretion has to do with importance. There's a proportion of importance, and there are things that have to be gone after. For instance, the comedians you mentioned earlier who, who mimicked the president, I think that's against the law. And if I recall when I was a child, on the radio, uh, you were not supposed to imitate FDR. That was not considered acceptable. I think that's disgraceful. But they seem to object to his private life, not his public life. That I can't understand. Tell me, do you have any other or ulterior purpose in your work than making a living by making people laugh? Uh, the audience seems to have defined that, Howard, as, as my uh, responsibility. I must be amusing, but I can take anybody on and I can be as impertinent as I want to. At a recent Democratic function for the Lieutenant Governor of California, I filled in for Adlai Stevenson. And I opened by saying to the audience, 1,000 assembled Democrats, professional Democrats at $100 a plate. I said, I fill in for Adlai Stevenson with modesty, but comforted by the thought that you have a history of settling for a good deal less than Adlai Stevenson. I didn't get the laugh. <laughs> well, Mort, I hope you continue to take on many people and continue to be successful at it. Thank you very much for letting us come here. Good night. Nationwide Insurance, the company that created Family Securance Service, has brought you Howard K. Smith with news and comment. Next week on News and Comment, the first of a two-part series on What's Wrong with Hollywood. Mr. Smith will talk with leading film personalities about the star system, what's happening to the American picture industry, how Hollywood is changing, what is Hollywood's future. Among the guests will be Jack Lemmon, Joe Mankiewicz, Lee Remick, Gloria Swanson, Stanley Kramer, Sheila Graham. Next Sunday on News and Comment, the first of two programs on what's wrong with Hollywood. Get your news straight from the men who cover the stories. ABC correspondents around the world report the latest headlines on Murphy Martin with the news every weekday evening at 11, 10 o'clock Central Time on ABC.